We have David Osborne. Uh, Introduce yourself. Tell I'm David. About yourself. Um, not really much about me. I'm a wrestler. And, um, yeah, we're going to talk about 296 and, and all that. Yeah. All right. Nice. Yeah. So, speaking of, you want to go in order from, uh, Start with um, start with the main event or start with the number five on. We can start with the main event with right, Pejera. Sure. Like, where do you think that he goes from here? Per, like after that performance. Well, I don't think he can come back to middleweight anymore. I think the the time is just it's just gone. So I don't think he'll get double champ anytime soon. He but was I, he was calling out Izzy again though. Yeah, but he wanted Izzy to move up to two hundred five with him. That's true. Cause I mean, dude, I know a lot of people know about this, but that guy's a massive guy. He's he weighs huge. he weighs two hundred thirty or something like that. He walks at two hundred thirty oh. in Pereira, yeah. Oh. And he is cuts he cuts to one eighty or before he cut to one eighty five. And then he would, he would weigh in on the fight day at like two twenty. So, oh. like, so for for two yeah. minutes, it's before and after the weigh in for two minutes. He's just one eighty five pounds because he dehydrates himself so much. There's almost no water in his it's like body. A, it's like a sponge, and then like he adds the water back, and then he just fills up. Is like oh. yeah. And who is the dude he was calling on? Israel Adesanya. Oh yeah, and he—he's he's the guy that does the Fortnite dances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's uh, <laughs> he's more or less weight than him, or he's asking him to move up. He's asking him to move up, but is he? He normally fights at, he, at his, 185. He, at one eighty five, but he doesn't cut much weight. He doesn't cut much weight. No. They say his natural weight is around somewhere around oh, okay, one eighty five. Okay. Oh. So you know, even even seeing seeing the way that that Pereira's calf kicks hurt for Oscar. The, He's yes, a master right. at those. I know, but the but... dude took so many. Yeah, because also it's like with Pejera, he doesn't give any like coordination to it. He just throws it. He does. You can't tell. Oh, that's what they were saying. Him. He hides and it. And so, well. like, and with with um, um, Prohaska, they, one of the things is that he's constantly level changing and moving. So he puts so much weight on his legs that whenever those get kicked, he just falls yeah, over. No. It's like getting sweeped. Oh. Yeah. To me, I mean, to me, even seeing how much power those kicks had, it was surprising that Izzy took so many. Yeah, yeah both no, fights. That is true. And he was wobbling in the first round yeah. itself. For Oscar, yeah. yeah. I mean, and those, those elbows that he ate at the. What, what did you think about the finish? Because those elbows oh, that the he stoppage. ate. Stoppage, yeah. He definitely, definitely got knocked out. That. He definitely okay. got knocked out, in my opinion, from those elbows that he took to the. the that was my first there. time watching MMA, and I still thought, like, why did it end? Why did it end right there? <laughs> I, I tend to agree. I, I think, think that it, I think that there should have been given more time. I do think he was out, but I think there should have been more time because I don't think he was out for very long. Yeah, because I mean, if you look at Prosca's fighting style, his fights in the UFC when he fought Dominic Reyes and when he fought Glover Teixeira, he definitely, he, I mean, he was definitely out a couple times during both of those yes, fights. Yes, but he recovered pretty easily. Yeah, and it's like he ha- has more in him, so it's yeah. like, and I I've seen people argue that. You know, oh, or some people say one. Yuri said himself said it was fine, but it's just I think that's just him being humble. And the second was they're saying that he got in a worse position yeah. than he did in because in Dominic Reyes when he got knocked out he was on top, er, and then in Glover Teixeira he was you know he was against the cage and he wasn't he wasn't in a terrible position. He got hit with the up kick with Glover Teixeira, right? No, he got a kick with the up, he got hit with the up kick. That was Dominic, Dominic Reyes. Reyes. Yeah, that's what it was. It'll be interesting to also to see wh- where Prohaska goes from here too, because yeah. I mean, who does he fight? He doesn't fight Ankalov because that's gonna be John, Johnny, Johnny Walker. Walker. Um, I mean, not. I mean, really. I had I had the, I had the the things pulled up for the for Jamal the Hill is trying to come back, but it's I think like, Jamal Hill and Pereira is, are gonna fight. That's that's gonna be Pereira's next fight. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, that'll be an interesting one. Jamal Hill doesn't have too many fights in the UFC, though, which is weird. Yeah, a lot Hill, of the, yeah. He's a weird Jamal guy. Hill and Prohaska both didn't have too many fights in the UFC yeah. before they became champions. How many did Prohaska have? Three. Oh. Three. Three, including his... So, two, right? Yeah, he, I guess so. He had one against some random dude, and then one where he knocked out Dominic Reyes. And yeah. sent him for the title. What is his strength? They were saying that Pereira is really good at striking. He's yeah. also he he's he's a good striker, but he has better ground game than Pereira, or at least based off what we've seen so far. Mm-hmm. I've heard that Pereira's a jiu-jitsu brown belt, which is interesting because you just never yeah. see it. Okay, but here's the thing: I was very impressed by his ability to not take damage on the ground. Who Pereira? Yeah, yeah. He was... Like with against Blockowitz and against yeah. Prohaska, like whenever he was on the ground, he didn't take any risks at all. Not yeah, a he, single. He, did, one. he nullified the damage a lot. Yeah. So it's like, like grabbing their limbs or whatever, you know. 
it, like he didn't let them score much else besides control time whenever he was taken down. Mm-hmm. But yeah, looking at looking at the light heavyweight division, I see. So, or it says the champ is Jamal Hill because it hasn't up, up, or it, has, it hasn't updated yet. Yeah. But it's saying Prohaska, Ankalaev, then Pereira, Blackwitz, then uh, what's that dude Rakic? And him and him and Blackwitz are fighting. Oh. They're yeah. Fighting yeah, in January. Yeah, yeah. If I, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. He's not not a very big name, but he's just sort mm. of another one. He's just, there. I don't he's know. Just there. He's he's number five. I know. Right it's, now, it's, which is. Light heavyweight's a weird division. Yeah. After John Jones left, it's just been so odd. Yeah, it kind of. And, and, and the thing is that after John Jones beat a lot of those guys, a lot of the guys either moved up to heavyweight or retired. Mm. A lot of the grades. So it's just this new era of yeah, skill. All the best people. Yeah. Was there that, a canceled yeah. match yesterday? Yeah, John Jones was supposed to be the main event. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was. I forgot about that. Yeah. Somehow. That would have been really... John Jones and Stipe. Yeah. Stipe is considered the heavyweight great. Or oh. the greatest of all time in heavyweight. Oh. But I don't know. I, I think John Jones would have beat him pretty handily. Stipe is an old uh, yeah. man. Stipe is old. Did you see him? Like, whenever they showed the camera <laughs> Dude, to him? He was literally he looked, wobbling. <laughs> yeah, no, he was. He looked old. He looked really old. I mean... Yeah. And I, when John Jones comes back, too, he's going to be so roided up now that USADA's gone. That yeah. it's like, how does Stipe... I think the thing that they got to replace Usado was the one from the NBA. The one that the NBA uh, uses. So it's not, it's not awful, but I wouldn't. it's probably not as good. So does that change what they're allowed to supplement or what they're not allowed to? No idea. You know what I saw yesterday? It's huh. not off topic, but it's kind of off topic. Yeah. Uh, Usman Nurmagomedov got, got popped yeah. on the steroids. I, I didn't say what it was whenever I saw yeah, that. But but the, the fact that they're not choosing to disclose the medicine, I think, is a... It's pretty clear giveaway. Yeah. Because, I mean, he like a lot of those daggy fighters are like are the, so strictly religious that whenever it said illegal substances, I assume steroids because it's like, yeah. you know, there's not going to be a, a single daggy that's, you know, just going to be doing coke in Vegas, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I don't know. He was bantamweight, right? Lightweight, I think. Lightweight. Huh. Bantamweight is Umar. That's the other guy. Yeah. He would, the, the guy that got popped was not the, he, he's, not, he's the Bellator champ. He's not the, uh, the UFC guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know who you're talking about. That was, but they said they said or Makachev wanted him to come to the UFC. He said or Makachev said he's gonna move up to Walter White and he's gonna slip. He's Walter White. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's gonna let Usman just take over the take What about the weight. heavyweight match yesterday? Oh Tom Aspinall yeah. versus Sergey. That was good. Yeah. It, it went exa- actually like exactly how I thought it was uh-huh. I mean just cause whenever you look at both of their average fight time both of their average fight time like 2 minutes and 30 seconds yeah, yeah. so it's like you thought I, I didn't know I thought cause usually whenever they put heavy finishers up against each other yeah not usually but sometimes it just goes a distance yeah which is those hammer fists were <laughs> man yeah, heavy, heavyweight hammer fists I yeah. mean cause he landed like whenever he landed he went all of his force down on that and just hammer fisted his yeah, face no. yeah I mean even ha- hammer fists are just crazy in the heavyweight division even when you're seeing you're seeing Francis yeah or back when he was doing it oh Francis oh did, did you watch that uh, boxing match I did yeah that one was a, that was a huge robbery in my opinion that showed how re- that made that boxing is so rigged that it makes UFC look like just this yeah. pure industry. Oh, <laughs> like, boxing has always been rigged, though. Yeah, people were saying that, or people were saying that they used to pay the fighters to to rig the fights. Yeah. and you know, you know that one famous Muhammad Ali picture where he's like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, apparently that's not him celebrating. That's actually him telling Sonny Liston to get back up because he knew he wasn't done. Oh. Uh... And the story that I've heard about that fight, their their first match, I don't know about, but their second fight when they rematched. Yeah. Apparently, Sonny Sonny Liston was involved with some criminal activities or wow. some gang or something, and that gang, they they didn't exactly hold his family hostage, but they they threatened to. They said you have to lose to Ali because the gang bet on Ali. Oh. Uh, th- that's. So they, I don't he, know. he forcefully lost that fight in the second round or something, and he got knocked out. That that's pretty crazy. I'm gonna need to look into that more. That doesn't really surprise me that much though, just because of. I mean, Sonny Liston is a scary Just guy, context. Bro. Is the UFC yeah. supposed to be like a reform of fighting? Or like they're reforming whatever. Or they're kind reforming whatever's UFC, wrong with other styles of fighting? There's definitely a lot of influence in the judging stuff. Uh-huh. Like there are fights that have been judged poorly that are controversial. But 
like yeah, the the, like, the fights itself, I highly like they're they're not actually rigged because yeah. the because yeah. the things that if they were rigged, Conor McGregor would be undefeated. He wouldn't yeah, have lost to yeah. Diaz that first time. Yeah, you know, like that, that's just a prime example because it's like if it wasn't, then they would not have let the most marketable person ever lose. Yeah. You know, and yeah. even, even they don't do rankings either, right? Hmm? They do they rankings. They do rankings as in UFC, yeah. Oh, like pound for pound. N- uh, rankings in terms of what? In terms of the division? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. They do. They rank all the players, like from one through whatever? Well, it's the top 15 are ranked, and everything yeah. else be- oh. below that is unranked. Yeah. But the usually, or the way that it worked in the past for title shots is it's just guys that were the champion, and then it's just guys that were number one, two, or three. Yeah. Or just people in that top, that top, the top categories. So... You have you could get there on merit alone if you could back up your words and you could, you know, fight all these guys off and you could get to that top three spot. Then it's you true. could you could get a, you could get a title shot. Oh. And now they're complaining because recently they announced Sean O'Malley versus uh, versus Vera again. <laughs> yeah. And the only reason is because uh, O'Malley's lost to Vera before. And they, but it was they the said, reason why it's a it's a rematch though is because it was a sort of a a loss that was uh, it was a really funky loss because. He literally got kicked in his pineal nerve, like the, his the Cheeto's toe hit O'Malley's like pineal nerve in his leg, and it just like hit an off button, oh. and his leg just like fell asleep. So oh. he was just like falling over. And then he just punched him, and it was just, oh. yeah. Yep. So but, then you know O'Malley was salty about that. He's like, it's not really a loss. And then Cheeto's like, yeah, it was a loss. So then, and then O'Malley became champion. And then suddenly they have a rematch. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like they should actually. Or me and a lot of other people have been saying this, but they should give the shot to people that actually deserve it. Marab, Cody Sanhagen, yeah, Corey Sanhagen. Corey Sanhagen. Yeah. Yep. But there's, or at least, but overall, I feel like it's not been that bad. Because uh, they said they Hamzat is a way bigger draw than Duplessis, but they're giving Duplessis a title shot. But the thing is that you could argue that Duplessis, like, deserves it more. He does deserve it yeah, more, exactly. Exactly. But Vera doesn't deserve it over Corey Sanhagen. Oh, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know what you're saying now. And, and now we have the middleweight title with uh, Strickland and Duplessis, neither of which are or the UFC likes very much, I think. How long do you think Bo Nickel gets a title shot? How long until? I, I don't know, honestly. I Bo think Nickel, he deserves a top five fight next. Yeah, yeah. He's on the rise. He's, he's, yeah, it's going to be know, interesting. His wrestling is just insane. His wrestling's crazy good. And I mean, just the caliber of athlete is just, I don't, it'll be, I think he'll mow through most people, in the, or a decent, er, it, it'll be hard to see some people, but I think that he'll do well against a lot of people in the top five. Yeah. How does the, He's way, he's welterweight, right? Or is he middleweight? I thought he was middleweight. middleweight yeah, he's middleweight. How does the UFC get people around the world? Is it just money? Like, why would anyone want to do UFC? Well, because, like, it's, it takes aspects of different countries, like, national art. Mm-hmm. Like Dagestan is like they love wrestling so much there, and like wrestlers can actually do well in the UFC. Mm-hmm. So it's like and, and it's so marketable money. that it's like they just take these wrestlers who are so good, teach them a few punching combinations, throw them in a cage to fight, and then it's like their whole con- they're representing their country. Yeah. So then they just you know become super popular. Yeah, but like, why would someone or does anyone believe that UFC might be like, I guess, almost. Like a stain on their sport, like or does anyone view UFC in that way? What do you mean a stain? On so their if sport? someone is is super dedicated to the art of Muay Thai or something, why would they, I guess, go do MMA? I mean, I guess to prove that their martial art can beat all. Oh, uh, as in, like their the way that they've adapted the martial art can beat anyone. Like it's in it's it's the most effective. Their their fighting style trying trying to prove that their fighting style is the most effective i guess oh. is one is one way but yeah, also for sense. money <laughs> it's yeah. the money but and also there aren't many globally recognized globally recognized muay thai you know maybe like uh, rod tang but ro- or i'm not not even people just organizations yeah mm. that's true yeah you, and you know why yeah, that rod there's tang so all, the, one of the reasons why there's so many ufc fighters from other countries you don't see as many from the u.s is because UFC fighters don't make that much, but for someone that lives in Brazil or Dagestan, they can live off of the money that they yeah. get from a prelim fight. Yeah, easily. Yeah, true. Yeah. So, so they can take that money and then like, but in the US, it's like not really enough to live off of. But if you're living in Brazil or Dagestan or Turkmenistan or wherever, <laughs> then it's yeah. like, I mean, sixty k is like 
for one fight is like amazing. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. What do you think about the UFC paying? Whatever? It's kind of scummy. I, I don't like that. You know, half of your pay is based on if you win. It's just yeah, like that makes sense. I don't know. I think that people who lose should still get bonuses. Also, like if it's just a really good fight, I still think that like if if it's if like like Jones Cormier too, like that fight was like really really good. So it's like, and that fight grossed so much money that it's like, do you not think that both of them should also really get a bonus? So they're like, you know, he, like he for did, putting he on did. a show. He yeah, did. I know. I know he did. He got like a million dollar bonus yeah. or something. But um, you, you don't see that all the but time. That show probably made 80 million more. Oh, yeah. Just definitely got a small fraction of what that, yeah. what that actually was. Champions, I feel like, make a decent amount of money. Not yeah. as much as boxing, though. I know well, Floyd... depends on the champion too. Flyweight versus you know. What's yeah, the organization right. for boxing? Before? There's there's WBC. There's 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 another one too. WBO or something like that. Right? Yeah. Let me look it up. Yeah. But in general, in general, they they were saying that boxing isn't, or the there's a bigger draw towards the boxers themselves. Or that's what I was looking at. The marketing strategy is different because in the UFC, people say let's watch UFC. You know, there's a middleweight title fight. Yeah. But in in boxing, they say, oh, it's Floyd versus De La Hoya or something like that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. The title doesn't matter at all. Yeah. It's because there's so many different organizations, but the UFC is like a monopoly. But it's like you don't have to. You don't have the conversations where it's like this boxer from this organization might not be able to fight with someone from this organization. Yeah. But with UFC, yeah. it's just one umbrella. But it's also like that's where that's where you get fighters that don't get paid that much too. Yeah. So it's a double edged sword. Yeah, so WBO, WBC, uh, I don't know what the WBA is, but I think it's the same yeah. thing. And then there's the IBF. When did Dana White take over UFC? He's, he started it. Oh, really? In the well, 90s? Technically, he didn't start it. Well, who was well, it? Was it Chuck Liddell or whatever? It started no, in the no, no, 90s, no. right? Well, it's, so basically, I watched a thing on this, actually. He, well, he lived in the East Coast first. And he was actually getting chased by a mobster that like, <laughs> like, like, like Leonardo or no, um, Johnny Depp actually played this mobster in a movie and basically told, like called Dana White and was like, you know, or he went into his boxing studio and like basically asked for like 20, 20 grand. And then he was like, no, you know, F off. And then basically gets a call from him saying like, do you have my money? If you don't, if you don't get it by tomorrow, things are going to happen, blah, blah, blah. He's like, he's like, okay, hangs it up, gets a one-way ticket to Vegas, and then just, like, tries to start the UFC. And then, um, but there was, like, it was so broke at the time that, like, it, they had to do so much, like, mm -hmm. just to get it to, like, stay afloat. Yeah. yeah. When did Joe Rogan get involved, you know? Since, like, since UFC, like, five. Yeah, that's what I thought. He, he did it he for, He did a like, lot for the promotion at the beginning. You know, he didn't even get paid at the beginning. He just did it for free tickets for him and his friends. Like oh. it's kind of, like he was like oh, that's he how was, broke the organization yeah, no, was. No, yeah, right? he was basically Crazy. just like a he was just a comedian that was just like chilling yeah. in in the area, and he was like, "Yeah, if you give me free tickets, I'll compensate." Yeah, and I was like, it's crazy how much money he's made recently. It's so exponential. No, yeah. It's like this, and then yeah, he really. I think that him and Conor McGregor were two of the main people that really built the promotions for the UFC. Joe Rogan and Brock yeah. Lesnar and Ronda and, Rousey. Yeah. Those early people. The yeah. other people did a lot. Brock Lesnar and even Anderson Silva brought in a lot of money in the beginning. That is true. Conor McGregor is yeah. so exponentially famous yeah, yeah, that yeah. it's just, it's just like weird. And even his move to boxing. Now he, yeah. he's just not as good anymore. He's not. He's and not. Then, and not, then, not even But he's still, he's still the biggest draw by far. Oh, easy. He's still gonna like main event his, any fight he ever yeah. does. Any even if he's fighting, he even if he's fighting for the number five rank, it's yeah, still he's still be, gonna be the main event, event over yeah. any any. Title just because you can't put him anywhere besides the main event. Yeah, like it's it just doesn't make sense. It's because of like, his like entertainment value. right? Yeah, exactly. It's entertainment value. So watch it. That's people like, are watching the fight for Conor McGregor. Yeah, you know. So that's before the fight. So people know him because of what he does before the fight, the talking, the trash talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, when when he was. Or rising to his popularity, and when he was getting to his most popular, he he backed up a lot of what he said. He, yeah, he talked so much shit and just destroy the other oh, person he, in like in the octagon. He would always like say the way that he was gonna beat them too, like oh. like with um with Ho with Jose Aldo, he was like, yeah, I'm gonna KO him with my left hand shot in the first round, and that's literally what he yeah, did. It happened in it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, 13, 13 seconds. seconds. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and in the did you see the the McGregor Forever trailer thing? Mm -mm. Um, he got his son like a toy Lambo and on the license plate, it says Aldo 13 S. <laughs> so like Aldo 13 seconds on his uh, son's toy Lamborghini. It's just uh, like, like, it's like, it's such a troll. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. 
Yeah, I mean, even if you look at Conor versus Khabib, that that fight gross. It's the highest grossing pay per view in history. Yeah. Oh. It's, a, it's a, the fight that made the most money, mm-hmm. and that had so much build up to it. Yeah, it did. Like the Irish mob was like involved with McGregor at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he he hijacked a train or something. It's crazy. But you're saying no, the no, UFC? He was uh, no. It was uh, Khabib was in a bus. Or it was a bus. Khabib yeah, was yeah. in a bus, and he takes a dolly, chucks it through the bus window. And like just shat completely crazy. shatters. You know, if any other fighter did that, Dana White would be. They he just uh, cut him, but then Nate, it's Conor McGregor, and he's like, oh, oh, it's just <laughs> boys being boys. You know, like, <laughs> like Conor is just like his just golden goose that yeah. you know. He isn't that guy awesome? You know the. <laughs> so UFC really got big because of him. It yeah, got yeah. exponentially bigger. Exponentially oh. bigger, especially in Europe. Yeah. Especially yeah. in Europe. Yeah. Those press conferences were iconic, though. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, I I was surprised by how much research he did into into Khabib as well, because I was looking at some of the stuff before he came here, and he was talking about Ali Abdulaziz. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that was, that's crazy. Yeah, I know. He he did his digging. He does yeah, his digging yeah, yeah. for his trash. Just talk. how does he know? He knows. <laughs> it's like, it's, yeah, it's like it's like how does he know that Ali Abdi? He's just drunk on the stage, and he's just in his Irish accent, just like Ali Abdi's, you know, mad terrorist. You yeah. know, it's like terrorist snitch. Yeah, no, no, it's like you took money from Magomedov. It's like, how does he know all this lore about this? And, and like, remember, remember when he's talking about Noah? Yeah, that's that's Ali Abdullah's son yeah. that he, he uh, abandoned or something. Yeah, how does he know? It's like, I, I mean, he's like, I know things about you too. I know things. Yeah, and then Khabib's like, I don't know what he's saying. Like, I done I my research. Never talk to me like that. Yeah, again. never talk. Yeah, that was a good fight though. A lot of people, you know, say like Connor McTapp or whatever because he tapped, but like that was a neck crank. That was yeah. full on fulcrum choke. Yeah. You know, just his jaw over the his chin, jaw and this break. on the back, his jaw just break. yeah. <laughs> Even before I knew UFC, I knew about Connor McGregor and his press conferences. Yeah, no. It's also he did so much for that Floyd fight. Oh my gosh, Floyd. that per- that that was just just so, like that. He really solidified his like status as an entertainer from yeah. that Floyd fight. Just that trash talk and, you know, I'll slap the head off you. Yeah. You're 40 years of age. You know. The, what do you guys like, think about those matches? Like, the entertainment matches? Like, Logan like, Paul Like, and like the influencer Mayweather. boxing? Yeah. It's hard to say. It's like, sometimes it's kind of... Sometimes maybe good, sometimes Yeah, shit. exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Some... I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. The the Logan versus Floyd one, I I, I thought was just if Logan just doesn't know how to box. Yeah. yeah, it didn't make any sense because Logan's so much. Logan's a big dude. Yeah, Logan's a big dude, and Floyd's not. Yeah, like Connor was visibly taller than him, and Connor is the featherweight champion. Yeah, and I like. Yeah, like Logan Paul's also a WWE wrestler. Like he's big. He's a big dude. Yeah. So. A little juiced up. Yeah, <laughs> a little. <laughs> But so is Connor though. Yeah, Connor is juice. But you know, Nate, even Nate Diaz said this. He said everyone's on. Yeah, steroids. everyone's on steroids. I love Nate Diaz so much. Yeah, so Salam alaikum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I was talking more about the fact that those matches are bigger than most UFC matches, uh, and yeah. they're they're earning more money. The, the, is that yeah. bad for the sport or? Those earn more money than like the average UFC fight, but the UFC ones that are like. McGregor or like Sean O'Malley ones or like stuff like or Israel Adesanya or John Jones fights are usually bigger mm. than some of those yeah. are. Even Oliveira was climbing up a lot. There, yeah. Oliveira was a big draw before he lost. I mean, Oliveira can't speak English, but he's exciting to fight, yeah. to see fight. He's just hilarious to watch. He, yeah, he he gets knocked down so much, and he, he just somehow just takes takes it from there. Like yeah. sometimes he uh, he got he got hit with a right. During when he fought Justin Gaethje, and he just, he just, he just fell falls on his back. To his back. He fell on his back. And no one, like, no one wants to deal with that guard. Yeah. Because his jujitsu is so good. He's yeah. the most finishes. Yeah. No one's gonna try and just like, like let let just let yourself go in his guard because he'll yeah. just arm bar you. Yeah. I mean, have you seen the the video of Bo Nickel and the um, and Gordon Ryan wrestling or not wrestling doing jujitsu match? I did. I. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, Gordon, that was that was interesting. Gordon Ryan like uh, got suplexed by him. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. But, I didn't see but that. then he triangled him. Yeah, Gordon Ryan's a beast too. He, I think he's the one that's the most open about his his steroid use. Yeah, because also it's like he's allowed to be. Yeah. So there's no reason for him not to if he's if there's no reason for him. Yeah. How do they escape drug tests? They they don't need to for jujitsu. It's allowed. 
Oh, okay, but what about for UFC? Um, There's some strategy, bro. I some, don't know. Yeah. Okay. I like. Th- I don't know how Alistar Overeem or Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I don't know. How, or Fran- yeah, I, what happened? I don't understand how Francis and Ghana is not on steroids. I don't think he is. I, I don't understand how he's not though. You can I mean I it, just you can you can you so can tell big. you can tell when some people are on steroids because of how their chest is shaped or how their muscles are built. That's but true. Francis but Ngannou, is he just black? Francis, yeah, no, yeah, he's just this, he's just uh, this absolutely huge Nigerian guy. Yeah. He's, but he's just huge. Well, West Africans he, have crazy genetics, bro. Yeah, and also, I'm pretty sure he's working in the sand mines since he was eight. He's working in sand mines, yeah. and he's um. He's, he's broke as fuck. He's eating out of a trash can. <laughs> he, How'd they he, get him into the UFC? How are they getting people like that into the UFC? It's even, Joel Romero is even more of a genetic freak. His spine is fused. You know, yeah. his he was, spine is fused so he can't get knocked out. He eats head kicks. <laughs> he's just like, he's just running and his, his neck doesn't move whenever he moves. It's just like... Bro, how did they get those like, broke people, like people who lived in just african village into the ufc because most of those people find fighting and they're like oh this is way like look at mike tyson he was broke whenever oh, i mean yeah. but he's just... in the u.s i mean i just i think it's crazy how you can get someone working in a oh, sand yeah. mine in nigeria to into the ufc yeah no i mean well what he what Nganu did was is he literally escaped africa he like walked like three thousand miles really and then got to france from africa oh and, and then, then like and then... And met, met a boxing he wanted to be a boxer but then he met an mma coach in france and it's like, and then he made his way to like Germany or something like that. So he, he, he got sent back on his trip to Morocco like three times, like trying to. Oh, hang because up of there. the visa or passport yeah. issues. That's just crazy determination, then. Yeah, no. Nah, his 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 life would be a good movie. Three thousand miles. But then is he insane, then, and then he beats Tyson Fury, and then like the the they just he, he, it was so yeah, rigged. I know, I know. I don't know. It's just because they wanted it. They wanted Fury to fight Usyk. That's true. But I don't know. Did you also? Yeah, I, I mean, it's there's also no way. Though, I just yeah. don't understand why that many people watch boxing. It's just, I don't think it's just as fun anymore. It's not. It's not as exciting. It's you probably good mean, back then. It, it is. It is. Yeah. Even even early because there's no days. more Mike Tyson's or yeah. no more Ali's mm-hmm. or no more whatever. It's just like like. Floyd's retired. Canelo's, sort of, you know, like uh, he's Canelo's. Cool. Canelo's like the face of boxing right now. Is it because yeah, a lot of people not, are just he's not amazing? But all, yeah, he's not amazing. I mean, or he's he's a good he's boxer. He's an yeah, amazing yeah, boxer, yeah. but like I'm talking entertainment yeah. wise, it's like he's you know sure he's really interesting. It's not. To watch, it's not. Yeah, it's, or, you think you don't the, get that build up anymore yeah. with boxing? You think the reason there's no more uh, Tyson's or Ali's is because they moved to the UFC, or those kind of people are just incentivized to move to the UFC? It's a good question. Um, I think that a lot of fighters realize that boxing is sort of a dying sport, mm. almost yeah. in, in 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 some ways. Um, but it's kind of hard. What do you? Th- I mean, I don't know. I feel like there's always or there's even always potential. until until Floyd retired. I think there's always or the boxers of that. Even even our childhood era, we're all, we're still a draw to watch because if you look at the the, the highest grossing pay per views of the 21st century it's connor versus khabib is up there but most of them are floyd fights i think mm-hmm. connor floyd was i think that was the highest pay-per-view fight ever no 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 no. It's, it was floyd and manny pacquiao it's the really highest, yeah it's the highest pay-per-view fight ever i know that connor connor versus floyd is like two it's, or three it's second then. yeah uh, yeah uh, i can look it up right now yeah. keep talking but <laughs> no yeah uh, connor made like i think 250 300 million from one fight that's insane it's like and he lost and he lost <laughs> yeah well i mean to, he gave floyd a run for if that was an mma fight floyd would have been dead i think that much money is just so bad floyd bro. would have been dead if it was an mma fight well yeah because after after connor got that that amount of money he just became a cokehead yeah and he he lost all his he his handled it just about how pretty much how anyone would have though <laughs> just you know like, yeah <laughs> I'm just saying, like, whenever you look at most people who've ended up with Conor McGregor level s- status and money, they usually end up yacht up, you know, yeah. cocaine, Mayweather? you know, living with celebrities everywhere. Like, yeah. it's just. Is Mayweather? Mayweather? Yeah. What about him? He's Man? in so much tax debt. Oh, yeah. He, he has he's, so he's much made tax some questionable problems. decisions with his money. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. All right. Like, so, like, really, Conor's way ri- He has way more money just because Conor's not stupid with it. Oh. I mean,. I mean, Obviously, he's spending hella money, but he also makes hella money, so yeah. it's like it evens out. But Floyd got like four jets and like yeah. you know three yachts, and it's yeah. It's like now he has tons of tax problems. Yeah. 
Holy, all right. too much I have money. It. It's all right. The highest grossing pay per views of all time. One is Mayweather versus Pacquiao. Oh, yeah. With four point six million. That's dollars. an out of prime Pacquiao too. Yeah. Well, Pacquiao is crazy too. Yeah. Eight division world champ. You know Pacquiao and Gerardo Davis were rumoring about fighting. Oh really? Yeah. Boxing. Yeah. Huh. Um, and then uh, Sean O'Malley versus uh, Ryan um, or Ryan Garcia. We're, are, we're are, they, are they the same weight? Yeah. Really? I thought Ryan Garcia was a bit heavier. Oh, Ryan, Ryan Garcia fought someone this summer, right? And he huge. fought Javante Davis. Yeah. Oh. And he lost. Oh. Yeah, he got knocked out. Uh, All right. So it's Mayweather versus Pacquiao, Mayweather, Mayweather versus McGregor, uh, Khabib versus McGregor, De La Hoya versus Mayweather, Mayweather versus Canelo. Wow. And then uh, Poirier versus McGregor, Diaz versus McGregor. The other Poirier versus McGregor. Yeah. It's just it's just McGregor and Mayweather. Yeah, just, literally just McGregor. Running, they're running yeah. the... It's crazy. Yeah. 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 Oh, like, I'm pretty sure nine out of the top ten highest pay-per-view UFC fights, nine out of the ten are McGregor. You can see it. I mean, the only ones I think... There was one Brock Lesnar fight. It was either Brock Lesnar or it was J- Jones Cormier too. No, 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 no. There, it's, it was Usman versus Masvidal. Really? Yeah, that fight did a lot of money or a lot of numbers for some reason. Oh, that one, I mean, that two, that one like two years ago or something. It was three years ago ish now. Okay, I remember a lot of people were talking about it. Yeah, yeah. No, the one, the one that you or the one that we were talking about when it happened was when Usman lost. Uh when? Yeah, that happened last year. Not last year. I'm talking that's, about that's two, three Leon. years ago. Were people talking about <sighs> Usman versus Leon? Is uh, that 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 was that was rough. Yeah, I know. I felt bad. You gotta like pull it man. out of the fire, Leon. Come on, man. <laughs> Don't let him bully you, son. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was sort of destroying him, too. Oh, he yeah. He just got knocked out at the end. I mean, that was like a rocky scene, though. Yeah. Whenever yeah. you just head kick, minute left in the final round. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see Leon versus Colby, though. That's gonna be a tough fight for Leon. Yeah, it'll be a tough fight for Colby, too. That whole card is stacked, though. Yeah, that card, I think, is... Is that the next one? Yeah, it's yeah, the next one. Uh, I, think, Pen- I think it's Pen- the best uh, card of the year. Royval. This card would have been the best, but John Jones pulled out. Yeah. Shafkat and Wonderboy. Yeah, that's, Who do you got for that? Samir. That's a good one. That, I'm really excited. <laughs> what? I said Samir. Huh? He said Shafkat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I didn't Shafkat, even make that connection. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe Shafkat. I think he's he could. Wonder Boy is clean striking. Yeah, I think I think Shafkat could be the champion in the future. I think he has a lot of potential right he now. He does. He's finished. Every, he's undefeated and finished every fight he's yeah. ever won. So it's never gone the full full distance. Oh. And he's undefeated too. And he's good at. He's well rounded too because he's knocked people out and he submitted them. I think yeah, he has he's about good the at same. wrestling. He's from Uzbekistan. It's just this <laughs> Mongolian like freak of nature. That area is crazy, bro. <laughs> what are they breeding? Yeah. Up. You know what I was wondering when we were talking about Conor McGregor being a cokehead? Are most of the guys in the UFC like good guys, like family? You know, like family uh, oriented or? It it's hard to tell. Yeah. Because like, I thought when I saw uh, Pereira yesterday with his, you know, two sons and family. He oh, like, Pereira's a good guy. He looked like such a wholesome family. You guy. know, he's like, he's yeah. like he's a nice guy. He's just scary though. He's just scary to look at. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's just he's so intimidating. Both of those guys were are are uh, you, yeah. pretty good guys. Good guys. I know my mom was okay. Like you know how our parents are. She was like looking at the other guy. She was like, "This guy looks like, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like rowdy." Like, (laughs) (laughs) oh, because he has the beard, the ponytail. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. dude, Pajara is so big though. He's so scary. Yeah, he's huge. And have you seen all the memes like the Easter Island faces? That that's what he looks like. Oh yeah, yeah, he does. He does. He looks like the Easter Island face. (laughs) He does. Like you know, like just the face he has to get like across the octagon, just like like, (laughs) squared up. Does he have a huge neck too? (laughs) Yeah, he has a thick neck. I saw this one thing that ESPN was doing where they had him and they said shout out an emotion and then you can act it. And oh no no no, was was it Nina? It might have been Nina. You know who Nina is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the one girl. Yeah. They were or they 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 said let's shout out an emotion and have you act it, and uh. They're they're like happy and he's like, oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 And then, yeah. They're like sad, <laughs> yeah yeah, You're frustrated, just, just just no change, surprise, absolutely no change. <laughs> it's crazy. Just I mean, but I I'd say yeah, most of the guys are good guys. Mm-hmm. UFC. Yeah, some of them are psycho. 
Yeah, and, but it also like there's, pe- there's people who put on acts too. Yeah, McGregor oh, like, definitely puts on an act. Yeah, oh yeah, McGregor puts on. Colby Covington puts on a, oh, on a yeah. huge act. Okay, but McGregor's a bad guy in real life too, right? He's like a I fucking cocaine. He's not a he's bad a guy. guy. He's just a crazy guy. Oh, okay, he's just crazy. I know he gives a lot of money to charity and stuff. He does. Oh okay. And he, I mean, he earned every cent that he made too. Yeah. He earned every penny. Yeah. Like I, you got to give him props for that too. Now he just does crazy stuff on his yacht, so it's like, yeah. all right, go do that. Oh, yeah. Hamzat's a psycho. Hamzat's sociopath. Dude. Oh, I think that so he was good, he would have lost though if that went five rounds. Yeah, I think he would have lost because he had a broken hand and, in the first round. That first round is crazy. Though. I've never never seen Usman get dominated like that ever. No, especially in wrestling. Yeah, like wrestling, he had, before that, taken down once in his entire yeah. career. He he got pulled down to the ground once in his entire career. Hamza? And with and, and Hamza no, takes oh, him down in the first four. few seconds. Yeah, he, oh. and he, he took him down four times that fight. Hamza is from where? Chechnya. Uh, Chechnya. Oh, Chechnya. Yeah. yeah. No, that's your place. <laughs> Bro, I never said that. Okay. Here, here's the here's the next here's the next. This is this is this is what two ninety six is. So it's Leon Edwards versus Colt or Edwards versus Covington. That's the main. And then Panto versus Roy Vall. I I mean I don't really care about flyweight now that no. DJ's gone, but I guess no. it'd be cool. They move fast. And then and then Shafka versus Wonder Boy. Which is that's, that's an gonna interesting be, that's one. Gonna be good. And then Tony Ferguson versus Patty Pimblet. Oh yeah, we gotta <laughs> talk about Tony Ferguson. He you know he's been trading with David, David Goggins, Goggins, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I've been seeing that all over my Instagram page. It's so funny. You know, I, I hope he makes a comeback and just recovers. I, I think that he's just or gonna just he's just gonna absolutely destroy Pimblet and just ride off into the sunset. Maybe. I don't know. Pimblet, they've been the UFC's been gifting, Pimblet looks, gifting him a lot of P- stuff. Pimblet looks like he's in a musical, like, like <laughs> as like a peasant from the 19th century. Here, England. I'll show you what he looks like. He looks, yeah, he His looks like, so bad. He looks like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looks like uh, he's Scottish, right? No, he's the dude from High School Musical. Isn't he from Man? Is he from Liverpool or is he? No, he's Scottish. Scottish. Yeah, I thought he was. Or yeah. Scouts or something. Uh, Welsh yeah. maybe. What weight division is this? Lightweight. Oh. Well, yesterday Tony Ferguson's there was... a monster, but he's he went on like a twelve fight win streak, then a from, six fight losing streak. He's from oh. Hoyton, United Kingdom, wherever that is. Yeah. Yesterday there was no uh, bantam weight or Liverpool, flyweight. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, it sounds like he has a Liverpool type of accent. Are the bantam weight and flyweight fights like rare or they just they're not rare? Oh. But um, there's not a whole bunch of uh, promotion for oh. those fights. I mean, bantamweight now. Bantamweight now, because Sean O'Malley's champion. Uh huh. Because you know he's he's, he's entertaining. Yeah. He's yeah. He I, like he's so recognizable too. Yeah. It's like you know whenever you see like a Sean O'Malley thing, and then it's like oh I recognize him even yeah, if it's like that guy. That yeah guy he's just that hair the guy with champion. the cotton candy hair who's the UFC fighter. Yeah. yeah. Even I, don't know. I had some friends that never watched the UFC and they knew they're they're like yeah. oh did you see that Sugar Sean knockout yeah when he, when he knocked out Sterling I mean you gotta respect that rise to the top though I don't know yesterday was my first day watching UFC so I didn't see didn't those you matches. watch didn't you watch Strickland out of Sonya? oh yeah I did watch that okay yeah. that, that was good but that was my first time <laughs> watching the entire card yeah, yeah, yeah. But, man Strickland really hit that upset yeah no that was a crazy fight too I that would have been you made so much money if you'd bet on that. Uh, no. Dude, I was, oh no! Oh yeah, I was... the betting ads are crazy. They're just promoting it so much. They want you to lose your money, bro. <laughs> yeah, no. well, you only lose if you quit. So. <laughs> no, uh, I'd say fighting is the worst thing to bet on because there's agree. it's just so there's just so many there's upsets. so, so much many that can happen. factors. Yeah, anything can happen. But the reason I brought it up was because I thought, or I was just imagining how much faster bantamweight or flyweight would be because I, I watched the heavyweight match mm-hmm. and then even comparison to. Uh, Lightweight or middle lightweight it was so much fa- it was so much slower. Oh, yeah, they, they I'll, I'll show so you. Fast. I'll show you. I'll show you DJ versus Rod Tang after this. Oh yeah, yeah. that's a so that the first DJ, round is so fast. They're just moving like <laughs> Demetrius Johnson could. He has so much mobility. The no, mobility is insane. That's a whole workout in and of itself that people just often neglect. Uh, or yeah. when you're doing bodybuilding oh stuff, my gosh. you just, just don't pay attention to mobility at all. And then when you yeah. actually work out mobility, because like, when I, mean, I broke my would... leg, I was training mobility to get it healed, and I was just yeah. like, oh, didn't even know I could move in these directions. How did you break your leg again? It was during track. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Mighty Mouse hit a suplex to the arm bar. All that yeah, was no. just... That's a crazy finish. You know what? I'll pull it up right now. Keep talking. Jamie. <laughs> Jamie. Yeah, Jamie, pull that up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. 
because even the heavyweight match when they were when they were looking for something to hit or you know they're like they're tra- testing out something or trying out something it was it was so much slower than the was it middle lightweight or whatever or middle yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they 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 move so so yeah look uh, at this yeah. this is a slow motion Ugh, I'll show it to the camera there's some goofy music in the back yeah that's no, some goofy what music. the hell's going on but throws him up into the air catches him with an arm bar on the way down There's no way it's still going on. Yeah. What's in super slow mo? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's enough. <laughs> I'll show you what it looked like in real time. Yeah, real time is. What if it said storage pool? <laughs> yeah, no, <that's> so funny. <laughs> oh, Ray Borg. You know, that that was actually cold because Ray Borg was saying he's saying Demetrius Johnson is this unentertaining fighter, no one's gonna remember him or something. And then and then I'm pretty sure DJ told him in that press conference he says no one's gonna remember you, but they're gonna remember what I did to you. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, that is hard. So, be here. I'll be here. Oh, that is, is this, just. This is what we're doing. Uh, Bantamweight. Oh, or is it flyweight? Flyweight, maybe. Yeah. It looks. Huge for oh, because they're shorter. Yeah. yeah, Demetrius Johnson's 5'3. That's why they call him Mighty Mouse. Oh. Just like midgets fighting. <laughs> Am I allowed to say Wait, that? Why get canceled? The, this is that's the, the celebration thing. with him doing the somersaults, too. Yeah. Uh, there you go. It just stopped recording because I accidentally shut my computer off. Oh. But I don't even think they heard you say midget. But I said it now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he said midget UFC. <laughs> you know, there, there, there is. You know, it's, uh, it, it's, or it's, it's midget MMA. Uh, it's not midget UFC, but there is midget MMA. Bro, you know, if we're talking about betting, I saw people betting on the spelling bee, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no way. There's actually, there's actually spelling bee betting odds. Uh, uh, that what would be a key indicator for you to bet on someone? Ethnicity. Wait, they're all Indian. No, I know damn well that you're not betting on like the white kid from Alabama. <laughs> like it's just not gonna happen. They're all Indian. <laughs> yeah, Indian yeah. and then Chinese. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, this is pretty much, bro. Pretty, what about Pakistani? Are there not a lot of Pakistani kids in the spelling bee? They're not like us. I don't think so. <laughs> they're not on our level. Oh, man, bro. Betting is just. It's, I think it's gone way too far. And it then, has. And you can bet pe- on literally anything. And, and there's people. I don't know. I swear it wasn't. I don't know if I was just too young, but I swear it wasn't like this before. But now I'm just seeing people betting on the most random stuff, bro. Dude, I'm seeing people bet on everything. There's people, they're literally, I, I saw this guy, or I know this guy, he was betting on some random ass La Liga team to win, or or their their games, like Mallorca, bro. It's Who all the, the apps, <laughs> it's all the apps, bro, because it makes it so easy. They're, they're, and it's being betting... treated as a joke, too, they're like, ha ha ha, I, I just, just bet, $50 I just lost $50 on this joke, dude. <laughs> I was in Vegas. Like, actually. bro, you're losing your money. Yeah, no, what are you laughing? <laughs> what are you laughing? Fifty dollars on the Sunday League football team. <laughs> oh, you... facts, dude. I was in Vegas and like those people like betting there. It was crazy. Yeah. Like, I, I was at. I was walking through the MGM mm-hmm. and there were people all watching college basketball and we're talking. It looked like a movie theater was filled up, but it was people with like sheets of paper. <laughs> and I was like. Like yeah. Jesus, like like is that seriously the way you want to spend your evening? You know, like you go on vacation just to you get some uh, adrenaline out of it. I think. If you win the money, oh yeah, you, you yeah. get that. Um, even waiting, like or even doing the thing. So will I win? Will I lose? Maybe. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's the adrenaline. It's the, the chance. Chance. dopamine hit if you win is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I went to Vegas when I was a kid, and it's just I was really young, but I just remember I did not like the place at all. It smelled like cigarettes and weed it's everywhere. Dirty. Yeah. It's really dirty there. Nasty place. Yeah, no, I actually. They're just um, hookers walking over everywhere. Yeah, oh, everywhere. I, the the part I, I'll never forget this, dude. I was walking through the streets of Vegas. My steps on a piece of gum, and I was wearing flip flops, and my flip flop like stuck to the ground, and my foot came out. 
And then I stepped on the <laughs> naked, <laughs> the naked ground of Vegas of the Strip. No. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I need to cut my foot off or something. Like, it's so nasty. <laughs> like the amount of like stuff that's just happened on the floors of Vegas, just streets of Vegas. Is Vegas the only place where prostitution is legal in America? I don't even think it's legal there. They just don't. It's care there's at all. no police in there. There's no police in Vegas. Oh. It's just like 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 on the strip. There's no police on the strip. Yeah. It's like it's kind of weird. There's that sphere now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like the the hotels own Vegas. Yeah. The, the casinos and the hotels own Vegas. That's insane. It's just a city. It's of a city drugs that's and sex. No, no, it, no one lives Sin there. City. Yeah, just there. Yeah, yeah. 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 No one lives in Vegas. Well, no one lives on like in, in the strip. On the strip. Yeah. yeah. And if you do, that means you're balling. Okay, or you're homeless. If you're living on the strip, you're either, you're either a baller or you're homeless if you're yeah. living on the strip. Yeah. People just don't know when to stop betting either. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what bet, that's how, how they get you. Yeah. yeah I saw some guy who, he went to Vegas and all the, or he's a huge gambler. He's a big, big time gambler. He's known. And all the, all the hotels and casinos invited him to Vegas and they spent, I think three mil on him because they expected wow. him to lose about ten million. Oh, really? But he made that money or something. Oh, really? And they all got so mad and they just yeah. kicked him out. You know Dana White gets yeah. kicked out of casinos. Yeah. Because, and it's not it's not he does any misconduct there. He just wins. Oh. Yeah. Well, it ha- that only happened at the Palms, I think. Oh really? Yeah. I remember he saying a lot of casinos don't like me. Or they don't want me to. Yeah, go a lot of them don't Vegas. like him. But it wait, was why the does Palms. he win? Is he just? He's just really good. He, it's oh. it's he's, once he, he knows makes Vegas. once he makes money, he just steps out. He doesn't keep gambling. Oh okay. Yeah, so he's like, and he's he's literally a multi billionaire. So he just like he'll throw like, you know, grand. seventy five grand, turn it into three hundred grand, and then be like, all right, I'm out of here. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, oh, they don't like that. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute, you're supposed to bet that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're supposed to try and double it, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. double it, give it to the next person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Is gambling a sin in every religion? I know it's a sin in ours. Yeah. I don't know, actually. I, I read the Bible a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, it is a sin, because uh, greed. Yeah. Greed's the seventh other sin. And lots of lust. Like, it was everything in Vegas. It's just, yeah, it's it's just so called Sin City. Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> That's a place that I'll never go very often. Maybe to watch some good UFC fight. Well, uh, I mean, the, the, the dome. Have you not seen there. the dome? Yeah, yeah the there. new dome. The dome looks crazy. Yeah. Oh, uh, wait, wait are you not, do you not even know what I'm talking about? Nope. Yep, should I pull it up? You know, sphere, right? Yeah, the sphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, p- pull up the Vegas. It's this J- thing. JB, pull that up. <laughs> they, if they have this thing, so they've covered the entire thing in sensors or screens. 1.2 million LED lights. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a billion. They can play something dollars. around you. And I, once you're inside that sphere, they close off the environment around you. So it's like a 4D experience, except for that many people in a stadium. This is freaky shit. Look yeah, I know. Picture. I'm pretty sure they can make it snow yeah, inside. It can be bro. an eye. <laughs> they, made it, they made it an eye. Bro, I'm pretty sure they can make it snow inside or rain inside. It, it's, it's a really, it's a 40 experience. It's like, it's really, yeah. really. And, the, and they're going to have USC fights in there. Yeah. Uh, when did they build it? When I went, it was 2019. Oh, uh, whenever I was in Vegas, I saw it was, it was like almost fully constructed. Oh. Because I was there in March. It was finished this, over the of, summer of, or something. Yeah, like I was finished. I was there in March of 2023. Right. And I was I, like. It's like that dome looks sick. I was like, I want to go there. Because <laughs> I went there yeah. four years ago, so it's been a while. Where do they have UFC fights right now? Is it in the MGM, a- MGM or in the Apex? So two locations. Uh, in the Apex, yeah. Yeah, two locations. Uh, no, I think they've also had stuff at like the Cosmo. Okay, but it's always in the US. Yeah. So all these people have to come to the US. It's not always in the US. Oh. It's just well, no, in, no, it's no, no, no. Sometimes no. it's in Vegas. Oh. Uh, the, the one that you MSG. saw yesterday was in New York. Square Garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But where else is it? Brazil? There is. I mean, there was there was one in Brazil the other day or the other. Sao Paulo. Yeah, Sao Paulo. Uh-huh. And then there's there's one there's one per year in Abu Dhabi. Uh huh. And then where else are they? They have them in Australia and Canada sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Canada, yeah, they have. Um, had them in Paris before. Is Dana White American? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dana. <laughs> uh, Very big American. Okay. He's good friends with Trump. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. Trump when he walked in. Trump Towers. The reason why he's so tight with them is because um, Trump Towers is one of the first people to allow them as a venue. Oh, I didn't know that. Trump, I just remember yeah. I saw this clip where he, he said, venued them. He said this guy or this guy gave me a lot when I had nothing. Why it's because it's because he venued. He said why would I slander him on yeah. the platform that I have or something like that. Trump's yeah. a huge fan of MMA, right? I think so. He's pretty big. Yeah. Uh, he goes to a lot of the events, yeah. a lot of the U.S. events at least. Yeah, he was there yesterday. <laughs> I saw him there. Put him on. And Tucker Carlson. 
Yeah, I thought Carlson was there. And Kid well. Rock. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what are all these people doing here? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just random celebrities at those things. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Ronaldo's a fan as well. Was Logan Paul there yesterday? I think he was. Yeah, he right? was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, M- there, MSG too. was a, it's a cool arena. It'd be so sick to go there. Uh-huh. I know Ronaldo likes them too. Um, but Ronaldo went to the boxing match in Saudi and he was talking to Israel Adesanya there. He's oh. saying, oh, because Volkanovski got knocked out the week before. He's like, oh, is he okay? Is he okay? That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, facts. Yeah. And they just all watch him, the celebrities. It's fun to watch. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we should talk about martial arts. Oh, my sparring partner just said he, did, he couldn't make it. Oh, really? Dude, oh. that sucks. I have to be getting home by 3 th- I have to be home by 3 30, by the way. What time is it? 3.02. 3.02. Um, we should talk about martial arts in general. Or, you know, just fighting. Can you make it a little bit later? Can you make it home? Or can you start at 3.30? I can. I could probably push it. I can probably talk for like another 10, 15 minutes. All right, fine. Let's do that. How long That'd be a good place to end if we just talked about fighting in general. Yeah, sure. What about martial arts in general? Oh, you know um, what I was actually wondering? What? We, we were talking about Alex Pereira's build, right? And mm. I was looking up stuff. Because I, I, I was just surprised on how his left hook is so powerful. And how, I mean, if he touches you, you just fucking yeah, die. And you how his, die. his calf kicks are so powerful as well. And it's the thing about his build. We were talking about this before he came. But the long insertions. Yeah. Because it's when... That's why people, MMA fighters, don't have big calves. Because their, their insertions are so high up. And that generates... Connor has them too. And that generates... John Jones. John Jones and even Charles Oliveira. But it do, it generates a lot of power in a short amount of time. Oh, and but the thing it's is, like a whip just yeah. yeah. There's, there's problems with stamina and stuff. Uh-huh. So you know we're all well rounded, but those that that generates huge power, and then also, I was thinking about this in the context of Bruce Lee as well, because if you remember the one inch punch, yeah, it was right here and it's like this, but it sent a guy seven feet back. Yeah. <laughs> It's just crazy. How does he? Or how? how, how Set wait, wait, was it was it was no? It knocked him into a chair, right? Or it knocked him into yeah. a chair? Yeah. Seven feet. <laughs> seven feet. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> flying across <laughs> the room. Just. But still, that that is a crazy example of power. Yeah. yeah. You think you can be trained? I guess so. I mean, but it's also like how much power to like to leverage ratio like creates that much force. Like, what's the I mean, like, what's the maximum? Yeah. You know? I think uh, it's just like anything else. There's probably part genetics, part training. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There has to be some limits to it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. Alex Perez is a scary guy. That is true. <laughs> that is true. And now he's the double champ. He's the champ champ. Yep. One of the only champ champs. Yeah. One of the, it's like eight or something, seven or eight. Didn't you say know? there's a guy who's going to be a champion in three things? Or three? No, there's, there's only no, like, I didn't there's say, a, I mean, I there's only like they... five champ champs. Are there? Well, he, he, he doesn't hold both titles consecutively. Well, it's like people who've just gotten both. People we can who... we can literally list these out. So BJ Penn, Randy Couture, Conor McGregor, Henry DC, Cerrudo, DC John Jones, uh, Cole Pereira now, uh, Amanda Nunes, and yeah, I think it's eight. Wow, you're exactly right <laughs> with your guess. Yeah. yeah. And now you're right. I forgot about BJ Penn. And Amanda Nunes. Yeah, BJ, you, BJ Penn was the guy. Who's the guy you're talking? Are you, were you talking about Kamzo when you said? I'm saying yeah. I said yeah. He could potentially be a three division champ. Oh. Because cool. he's a Hamza. Because he's a heavy dude, bro. If he. You think he could go to light heavyweight? Yeah. He weighs in and around. He he weighs around the same as Alex Pereira. But I I'll, think, or maybe I, maybe ten pounds. Yes, but I mean, I think he'd have some tough matches at light heavyweight. Yeah. No, but I'm uh, saying and, I'm and saying in terms of in terms of anybody that can make weight. Or to get to three divisions, I think it's him. That's fair. Um, he has some difficulty making maybe, one seventy. Maybe, maybe Mighty Mouse also though. Hi, yeah, how? You, one twenty-five, one thirty-five. Ah, no. Come to high body, body fat. Body fat? Yeah. I don't know. Not really. Oh. He, he's a pretty lean, dude. Oh. But he also cuts a lot of weight. Are all of them pretty lean? Just across yeah. divisions. Generally, yeah. I Generally. mean, you have you have some exceptions like, like DC or DC some of the or oh. Curtis Blades. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is definitely off topic, but we were talking about Yolo Romero earlier. You know, he was part of something called the Cuban Project, and we don't even know what that is. But you don't even know how old he is. Yeah, I just <laughs> who Yolo the, Romero is. Uh, He's estimated around forty-two, but you don't estimated we, age. He's a UFC fighter in yeah. what division? Uh, middleweight. Come on, I, I'll, you keep talking. I'm but sure that I'm that Cuban Project, 
they just something happened, bro. When he was a kid, he, he was. I, I don't know. If You're he saying was, he was part of a project by the Cuban government? I don't know. I just it was know. a Cuban or, wrestling program. Or yeah, the oh, Cuban, it's something like yeah. that. And then, but apparently, in one of his fights, the doctor took him in and she said, you know, he have, he has three times thicker tendons than than any any person I've ever seen. Like or, in his like orbital, that. like like I mean, like his like the tendons in his eyes. Yeah. Like, look at how freaky this this dude is. He knocked him out from elbows to the body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like an absolute freak. Yeah. And that guy's not a psycho, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the people pay. <laughs> the people pay per view. <laughs> Man. Uh, that's terrifying. That's terrifying. So dude. it was by some wrestling association or something? Or I, the, I don't know the specifics. I, of it. Yeah, I don't know any of the specifics of it. But I just, he, it just sounds cool. But also, the he Cuban looked, project, the Cuban wrestling. I mean, maybe he doesn't know his age because he's dirt poor, bro. <laughs> a lot of dirt poor people don't keep track of the year or like the day they were born. born. Yeah, Francis and Gandhi, we don't know his age either. Yeah. I don't think Alex Pereira, we know his actual age. Either. Yeah. Charles Oliveira, he was he was broke. Yeah. Charles Oliveira, that's why I call him Du Bronx. Guys. Yeah. Oh. That means from the Bronx yeah, in yeah. Uh, Portuguese. Oh. I didn't know that. Yeah. They, they, it was an insult at first. They said mm-hmm. they would be like, Charles the Bronx, Charles the Bronx, you know. Yeah. Like, Charles, like, like, you know, saying that he was, like, from the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. New Bronx is a cool nickname. That is a cool nickname, though. A lot of people have pretty cool nicknames. You know the worst I've ever heard? The, you know John Jones' original name before it was Bones? What? It was Sexual Chocolate. No. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> John Sexual Chocolate Jones. <laughs> Bones is so much more. No, no, no. It, it, I think he had bones in it, but he had sexual chocolate in it somewhere. Sexual too. chocolate bones. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I can find it if you guys keep talking. But I found yeah, it. This is the video of them, of them calling out his name. Sexual chocolate bones. I didn't. I can't even hear the nicknames they're saying half the time. Yeah. Uh, the announcers. <laughs> they, they need to change Sean Strickland's nickname to American Psycho. Oh, that'd be. I know. Yeah. That's what. That's what Johnny I've been saying. Bones. AKA sexual chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah. Bro. So bad. That's awful. That's the worst, bro. That's, can't get worse. Strickland's nickname is still Tarzan from when he had long hair. Yeah. Oh, I, it it yeah. needs to be American Psycho. Yeah. That's just, good. it just That'd makes the most. Have you heard his, that one uh, podcast interview Mm-mm. with him? He's like actually like clinically insane. Strickland? Yeah. Dude, yesterday, yesterday he was beefing with Valentina Shevchenko. I don't know if you saw that or not. <laughs> He's saying women can't fight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, his takes are so funny, bro. Yeah, no. Okay, yeah, no. It's like, I, I love this one interview. It's like, do you think fat shaming is okay if the person that you're fat shaming is someone that you know? And he's like, I think fat shaming is always okay. <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> and they're like, what I do you... It's always he's okay. like, they, they asked him something like, what, what do you think about like this bill? Or... Or I forgot. It was just something that was passed about women's law, and it was just it was something so backwards. Like they were asking him about like abortion or something. He's like, I think women belong in the kitchen. Yeah, no, it's like, it's like, dude, not what you're supposed to say. Yeah, no, he's saying something about the women's fight yesterday, saying, "Oh, this would be a good time to get a bathroom break." Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude, it's like Bruh. he's not he's not marketing. I mean, oh. I guess he's marketing himself pretty well actually, because yeah. people are he's, like, he's a draw. What did you yeah. say? People wanna, people, a lot of people, I think, want to see him lose. <laughs> yeah. Okay, to be fair, I don't think the average UFC audience cares, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, true. Even the women, you know? I mean... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, Valentina Shevchenko cared a little yeah, bit. Really? Cared. What did she say? She, I don't know, she said something... I don't know, she said something dumb. Uh-oh. She's like, oh, you, you got beat but you got beat by a girl. I don't, I don't can't do her accent. Uh-oh. Wasn't... Uh, there was the... Her, Shevchenko's draw with... Um, what's her face? Grasso. Grasso, yeah. That was I I didn't yeah that was I thought Shevchenko won that yeah that's uh, some because some one of the judges gave yeah ten Grasso eight. a ten eight in the last round no sense I I thought that Shevchenko won that round yeah but that's a uh, and that's the biggest case of people just act or people even saying this this fight was probably rigged yeah oh and or she was the, like the judging she was, was like so bad. after the fight she was like you know. Personally, I think the loss was because it was on Ind- Mexican Independence Day, and she's Mexican, so like I think that's probably why the judges scored it that way. And everyone was like, "Boom!" <laughs> just like, just like, just like, get her out of here. Why would you just say like, that? Personally, I think it's because of it's Mexican Independence. There's just Mexican flags everywhere, and it's just like, man. 
I don't know. That was, that was rough, though. You can say some crazy stuff, bro, <laughs> if you're yeah. like that. <laughs> you know, if you're at that level. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like I like to take this chance to apologize for the bottom of me heart. It's absolutely nobody. Yeah. Yeah, no. Those, those posts. This fight is not over. Yeah, no. Your wife is, not, is in me. Your wife is in me. <laughs> yeah. Those post fight uh, speeches are pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> mess it up I was looking at it yeah no oh but going back to what were you gonna say about fighting before I interrupted you with you all over bro I don't even know if we have time to delve into that now alright we got at 312 we can leave or let's end it at 315 bro <laughs> alright fine I was just gonna ask about martial arts in general or I guess we can just or why did you guys or why did you guys do fighting or start fighting or get into fighting I just thought it was cool. To be <laughs> okay. Yeah, so nice. um, my dad's prior military, so he had me and stuff from whenever I was little. Um, just like basic stuff, like you know, Krav Maga. You know, oh, really? yeah, yeah just, just basic. Is it real? I mean, it's it's a it's effective self defense, but not martial art. It's not an effective martial art, yeah. but it, it's effective against someone who doesn't know how to fight. Yeah, but so is jiu jitsu, bro. You could exactly, just, exactly. That, 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 that's what I'm. That, no that's what that's do. why. That's why I would agree that jiu jitsu. I mean, Krav Maga and stuff like those types of martial arts are are better than nothing, and it's the introductory to like learning about self defense in general. But stuff like jiu jitsu, like I think of the big four. It's like jiu jitsu, wrestling, boxing, muay thai. Yeah. Those, if you have all four of those, you have foundational knowledge in all four of yeah. those. You can beat ninety five percent of people. On the and then I got into wrestling with high school, um, and um, that got me interested in jujitsu. Um, so technically, I'm already doing mixed martial arts. Yeah, but uh, yeah, pretty much. Don't you do Muay Thai as well? Or are you started? I'm getting started on Muay Thai after wrestling. Yeah. Oh. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have wrestling <clears throat> once wrestling season's over. I'm gonna do Muay Thai and jujitsu. Yeah. And, and I mean wrestling. I feel like. I've I wrestled a lot with uh, some friends as a kid. Yeah, and I feel like I was already just naturally inclined towards it because I was wrestling high school wrestlers as just well. Just grappling, yeah. And I, I did fairly well. I even took them down a few times. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm Jiu-jitsu just instinctually also. just yeah. just built for wrestling. There's uh, instincts have a lot to do with it. No, just it, knowing it, how instinctually I'm so bad at jujitsu. The first time I rolled the with a white belt, yeah. even. I just did not know what a guard was. My guard is just so bad. Guard you got to mount every to, single time. Hard to fathom. Yeah. Just being on your back. Yeah. Yeah. He got he got me in mount every single time. Oh, dude, he never mount is me. mount is hard to get out from. Yeah. It's dangerous. Also, how do you fight from your back, bro? You can't. <laughs> like on your back. Yeah. I know, I know you can, but it's just it's especially for someone who's yeah, starting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you have really good jujitsu, you can triangle someone. You know. I can I can triangle someone right now. Yeah. It, 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 you don't need that that good jujitsu. Yeah, you just need the other person to be a complete moron. <laughs> yeah, or you just set yourself up really well. Yeah. Well, I'm not at that level yet. It's true. Neither am I. <laughs> or yeah, it's getting there, but yeah. S- starting Muay Thai. Yeah, I've I've got Baggy I've, Academy. I've started a little yeah. bit. <laughs> I've started a little bit. Of Gracie Muay Thai. Baja. Yeah. I started yeah. a little bit of Muay Thai. It's fun. Muay Thai is fun. My I, my kicks are powerful, but then my punching my form my punching form is just bad because I was just shadow boxing from YouTube videos. <laughs> just watching Baki. All right, now you have to unlearn all of it. Yeah, just that's what the guy was bad saying. Habits. He kept yeah. talking about muscle my, memory. Yeah. One reason also why like c- people who've never done martial arts can be good at martial arts if they just start training is because although they don't have that much experience, they also don't have any bad habits. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of people who've been doing it for a while they develop bad habits. And it's like if you just don't, if you just like, that's gonna be if me. You, if you combat, yeah. if you, <laughs> you know, no, yeah, if you just combat that by just forcing good habits and like getting good with good habits, then you'll be good. Yeah, yeah. this you guy's know? gonna be, he's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, I have no experience other than Taekwondo when I was a <laughs> fucking three or four or something, bro. Nah, it's better to, than nothing. Need yeah. to fight this guy. Yeah, how much did we curse in this? Uh, a little bit. We also talked about hookers in Las Vegas. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Alright, is that it? Yeah, it's 315. Alright. Thank you for having me. Peace out. Take a picture of David before you leave. Yeah, sure.